Hey everyone, welcome back to Greg Tech New Horizons. It has been a while since I read some comments, so it was really due time. I have a lot of tips and tricks, a lot of suggestions that I should do and implement um, right to the left of me on my screen. One of these suggestions involves what I already did right here. I did it due to the suggestion, I didn't come up with this on my own, <laughs> obviously. Um, it was suggested by Warlord Wasman to use carbon dust alongside some of the ores or some of the dust. You can actually triple your ores, basically. What you do is take some carbon dust, um, have the normal dust, and hit that in a blast furnace. These two together make three ingots. And since you get two dust from one ore, you basically get three ingots per ore. But this only works on some ores. The ore he suggested to do it was with malachite, and I already did that, and therefore have 500 copper instead of probably more around, I don't know, 300 probably without the trick. It takes a little bit more time, but we might set something up that actually helps us with this. There were also a lot more suggestions which we're going to go into in a minute, or maybe in a future episode, but first of all I have to address something. I kinda messed up. <laughs> I wasn't recording for, or I was recording half an episode, but I wasn't recording my microphone. So you might have noticed it in the tooltip right here. The input bus is an MV input bus. And actually the entire blast furnace was upgraded to MV. So we have MV energy hatches. We have MV advanced generators right here. We have the copper cables. And everything is basically upgraded to MV. And if we click go up here, you might have noticed it very, very briefly if you're extremely observant. No, you can't really notice it because I don't have it enabled. But you can see right here, probably uses 480 EU per tick. And the reason why we need that is in order to process stainless steel. We can quickly make that stainless steel dust since I prepared it here. I was just about to record a segment in the would have been episode where I made the stuff and we would have made it together as well as the blast furnace, but at least we're crafting the stainless steel together now. I think the recipe is somewhat like this. I hope it's shapeless. Yes, it is. So that is, oh, great. <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, let's take all of these out of here. Um, a little bit weird. Stuff that in here and just see if it processes. So we have a quest update as well. Let's see, let's see, let's see. It's currently losing efficiency, so therefore it's not working. Why is it losing efficiency? Um. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's not looking good. What's happening? Oh no, did you hear that? Um, I'm not too sure what just happened. Let me maybe investigate this for a second. I might have figured out the issue. We actually need a programmed circuit. We didn't need it for the carbon and the brown limonite, so I kind of just forgot it. But let's see, let's see, let's see. Efficiency is at 100% and we're starting right here. It's going to take a little bit longer. We could reduce that to 60 seconds actually. Why is that dropping? Um, I'm not too sure why that's dropping. I hope it keeps up, though it should keep up, at least if the efficiency maintains at 100%. Uh, we could reduce that to 60 seconds, as I said, but we would have to change our setup from nitrogen to oxygen, which we theoretically could do. I have to figure out a better setup right here since this is going to be our main EBF. Maybe that we can switch liquids around but I'll have to see about that. For now, we just need a very slight amount of stainless steel since I want to progress in Thumbcraft. Where is my Thumbnomicon? Right here. In order to, we actually don't need it. <laughs> Whoopsie. We just need the wand recipe. In order to make a wand with a great wood core, so let's quickly see the gold one. That's not a correct recipe. I don't know, it sometimes shows the wrong recipe, yeah. Here you can see it. We basically need, if we want to have a great wood rod with any kind of caps, you can see really any kind of caps, 
we need stainless steel screws, for which we need stainless steel ingots. These switch bones we actually have, I have done a little bit of twilight hunting, I'm going to uh, go through the quest book a little bit in a second, but important to know is that we really need this stainless steel to get going in Thumbcraft, and we need polyethylene to get going with our bees. The reason why we need polyethylene for our bees is in order to craft a beelizer which needs a display that needs two polyethylene sheets and we can't replace this with any other component so we really need polyethylene in order to progress with the quests. However, I was able to progress quite a bit with the bee breeding. I'm currently breeding up, I believe, noble bees. Now let's quickly go over here. As you can see, I already have the cultivated common and now come the noble ones, or maybe the diligent ones. I think it's an equal chance, but the quest book, for whatever reason, wants the noble ones. Uh, probably going to get both, but currently they are really tough to get. I have two automated setups, one for the common bees over here and one for cultivated bees. Both produce extra drones down here as well as some honey and the same for the cultivated bees. It's a very simple setup. I just have my item pipe and that goes back into the apiary as well as the drawer and the drawer is set to only accept uh, drones and the honeycombs so there will always be a princess in the apiary. I might just have the issue that currently for whatever reason some bees and potentially too many drones get in the drawer instead of back into the apiary but I'll have to see how that works out for my jungle bees that are automated down here. I also did a little bit of bee breeding, bee breeding, tree breeding over here as you can see the white willow for example and there's another crossbred leaf that you can barely notice but down here I have my jungle bees it's the same setup but as you can see we have around 30 bees in all of these but the first one only has 10 and it might run out of drones eventually. Not too sure where the issue lies there. I might just have to place the chest further away from the beehive or the apiary right here. And it's basically just the same setup. We have uh, the entire chest up with silky combs and their drones. So the queen or the princess can only go into the apiary that it stemmed from. And that's basically the way how I got the 370 combs that I needed to make the propolis. In order to process all of the combs, I actually built a setup right here with just a basic centrifuge and some item filters so we can put in the silky combs right there and in the chest as well. Then we go into the item filter, it basically just filters out the honey into a fluid extractor and the rest just goes up in this chest. As you can see, for example, the propolis and the silk wisp that are already synthesized is up there. And in this, we then have the honey go down into a scanner in order to scan all of my bees, since that's currently the only way that I have to scan the bees. And the apiaries I made with this setup right here, it's also pretty simple. We have a basic fluid extractor that puts the seed oil in this tank, and then it's being put into the basic assembling machine for the impregnated sticks, as well as the carpenter for the apiaries right here. But enough of the boring bee stuff, that is mostly going to happen in the background and you're not even going to notice it. What you will notice though is my progress in Thumbcraft, which there was a lot of, at least re uh, researching a lot. Insufficient V, yes, that probably won't be enough. 25, um, hmm, I can't actually craft that. That is kind of an issue. I might have to scale down on the wand then. So here's the workaround idea. We're going to actually use iron caps on the great wood wand. Therefore, it then will only cost 20 on the base and with the 10% increase or 9% increase that we have extra, it should still be manageable when our wand is filled up. Then we have a capacity of 15 hour wand which should then also be enough to support the gold one as soon as we charge our new great wood iron capped wand that we're going to make next fully up, then we can make the gold wand, if that made any sense at all. So first of all, we're going to get a great wood iron capped wand, then we're going to charge that up, and then we're going to get our gold capped great wood wand. What I personally find works very well for finding notes is going to F5, and then just holding your thermometer, and as you can see, we have a node right over my head. 
the F5 has the advantage that first of all we have a broader field of view and secondly we don't have the thermometer in our face entirely the entire time and if we're looking at something it's even more obstructed so it's really really a good feature to have and you can easily find the notes once you have them just go out of F5 equip your wand charge it up we still need some fire and I might just go into a nether for that into a nether into a desert or the nether since I think they might be more common in the desert biome more fire and in the nether I know there are very few notes but the ones that are there are definitely going to have fire in them didn't actually have to go looking for a fire note in a desert or the nether there was one actually rather nearby I also craft up the iron caps and this should hopefully now be working yes otherwise I would have been out of ideas so now we have 50 cap capacity, very difficult word, and with that we should then be able to craft the gold wand. However, I might actually try to craft something else first, but we'll definitely have to get this wand charged up. As well as that, let's also take this wand with us, since we can use the extra charge. And something I forgot to mention was that the quest book actually entirely reset you might not be able to notice it since i redid all of our quests it took maybe one day or so it wasn't actually too too bad but we have some quests that are missing from here for example the clay electrolyzing is missing and a lot of the quests that we did in the earlier stages since i pretty much just went through the main quests in these right here as you can see we had a lot of these already made same goes for here and in all the other chapters but it's mostly there, just if you're wondering where some of the progress has gone, that is where it is. Um, gone. <laughs> Here we hopefully finally go. That is 30, and you better be enough. Good, okay, we probably have three air left actually, that was somewhat unexpected. I also now understand why the quest required me to craft two great wood wand cores. If we quickly go in here, um, it's set to, and I was really confused, but now it makes sense. In order to make the um, gold capped wand, I actually need to make the iron capped wand first, and now we have both of them, and none of them are charged. <laughs> so it's probably going to take another 30 minutes it took to just charge it up enough in order to make the gold capped wand. So we should take care of that situation rather quickly but I actually don't quite know what we should do next in Thorncraft. Well, that kind of was a lie because I know exactly what I want to do next. Goggles of Revealing. Finally. I wanted to use my other one for that though. Oh my goodness, I just wasted that. Whatever it happens, let's wear these goggles because they look amazing on me. Very amazing. <laughs> Very happy to finally have these. I can retire my thermometer and should now be able to see all of the nodes around me, which should make refilling the ones at least a tiny bit easier, but it's still going to probably take 30 minutes each time I have to recharge. Slight change of plans. I have an idea right here we might have to just get some other quests done before we dedicate ourselves to Thorncraft and all of the other stuff because right here in, where is it, here, nothing more is unlocking. I have all the quests unlocked and it appears that we need some more progress in MV. So what we're going to do is do some quests in here. What I believe to be one of the next quests we have to attend to is the polyethylene, or currently I believe it's just the ethylene that we have to get. So we can easily get oxygen over here, but the ethylene is a little bit more complicated. We actually need two tanks. One is going to be filled up with our light fuel that we're just going to transport up here, and the second one will be filled up with the ethylene. We have to put it right in this spot up here, since we also need some steam from over there. So let me build both of these tanks and then we can start the actual production. Okay, it actually turns out you can't make three by three tanks. They have to be probably at least three by uh, four. So that should be 
good enough. I mean, three by three by four, three by three base, and then four high. So that works. We have our light fuel coming in. We have to be a little bit careful that we don't empty our entire tank down lower since that tank is actually smaller than this one as this one is made out of steel. Now I have to adjust the other tank and then we can hook up to machines. The machines we're going to hook up to are going to be, what do we need first? I think the first one we need is a fluid canner right here. That is going to can our light fuel into cans. Then we want a basic distillery. No, we want a basic chemical reactor that's going to react these cells with some steam. And then we want a basic distillery that's going to uh, process the severely cracked light fuel that we're going to get from here into ethylene and then pump it back into or pump it into this tank right here, which is going to hold all of it. It should just be a case of putting these two in here. And obviously my wire cut had to break right there just when I was about to finish. Give me a second. Here we go, here we go. I got a new one and that should hook up all of the power. We have an extra generator for this up here. This is using ADU for take 30 and this is just one. So we could hook these two up together now let's put some cells in here. That should auto output into the chemical reactor, which is starting a reaction. Now we just have to get back the cells down to here, which should just be a case of putting that there. And then a screwdriver. The reason why I'm using the higher upgraded conveyor belt there is because I had one laying around. But that's about all the reason. So seemingly it's working out well. The empty cells are consumed. The Lightly? No, 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 no. We want severely cracked because that actually gives us more ethylene. So we have some, but I probably didn't put in the proper circuit. Let's try configuration three, maybe? It's a lot slower now. Probably takes longer. We also have to get rid of the carbon dust somehow, which might actually become more of an issue than I think it will. Uh, because we don't have any sides available to this. Um, probably have to turn this thing. Just break it, turn it to the side, and everything should still be working, I'm guessing. Up there, still want the fluid output, and then connect it up to here, and get the output to the top and then we can have an item conduit and that just going into a barrel. Decided to opt for an item output at the front. Therefore, we have to put in a pump right there and pump out our ethylene that way. But at least we're now taking care of the carbon dust and getting quite a bit of ethylene. A little bit more and then we'll be able to complete the quest already since I believe that's just... No, it's four cells, not two. One, two, three, four cells of ethylene. Quest complete. Amazing. Acetic acid. Not what I expected, but maybe a step in making polyethylene. Um... I already have some of those, but that would allow me to make the Bealyzer, actually. Uh, we're going to go for the empty cells, though. Because I want to get it legitimately with all of the setup that is involved. So now we just need some oxygen. And then how difficult could this be, right? Uh, chemical reactor? That is not what I was looking for. Going to look into that in a second, though. Cleaned up the wiring a little. Uh, we no longer have the steam pipe coming through the wall. I now have it coming into it from the bottom. Right here, we have a pipe now. This is invisible from below. I'm not sure if that just goes... Oh, I don't want to lose that. Just goes back out here and then connects up to our steam boiler back there. So let's get some oxygen right here. That should complete the quest. Yes, I can count. Uh, or not really count, it's more like guessing. But molten polyethylene. Yes, going to, no, please don't fill up. 
I don't know where I should insert the empty cells now. Here, maybe? Maybe down lower? I'll, I'll figure this out, but I have to put the empty cells back for sure. Next quest is making molten polyethylene. This is actually not a main quest, so we're not going to do it since I don't see any sense in setting up a setup if we don't need it a lot. Where did I put my cells? Right here. So that should complete the first part of this quest. So we can focus on this second part and build a proper setup for it as well. Maybe we should build that setup mirrored to this side. I cannot also update it because I don't really want to have a tap. Maybe, maybe actually, no, no, let's not do that because that's an even center and we can't really put a tank in there. So we're just going to have a tank on this side, most likely for the polyethylene. Oh, we just move our setup from over here to there and therefore have this tank for ethylene and this one for polyethylene. We don't have our fuel tank now, but that should not be an issue, which also means that we don't have to be worried about draining our fuel tank down below. So we're building up ethylene right now. I'm not too sure if we're going to do the polyethylene right away, since I'm currently also processing some of our ores, or rather some of our limonite, and getting some... Uh, Please open, there we go, some carbon to put it into here. And I have to find out or figure out a way that we can have carbon going in here as well as the limonite contents. And I think the best way might just be filling this all up with carbon and then stuffing all of my limonite stuff into here. At least that's what I'm going to do for now. While everything is processing, I did a little bit of tree breeding and they are definitely some weird trees. Poplar wood. That is probably one of the weirdest trees I've ever seen. <laughs> that one also isn't looking too great, the cherry right here. We we're very, very close to getting the walnut or the chestnut, I'm not sure. The one that gives less seed oil though, because we're just one mutation away from that and two mutations away from the better one. As soon as we get the inferior one, we breed it with some of the hill cherries and then we should get the better one. And how's our bees doing? Still terrible. I probably ran through this cycle. Oh, don't do that. Ran through this cycle at least 10 times. At least. So there should be, I think it's 10% chance to get a noble. We should have totally gotten that already. So yeah, something's not going too great there. And we should probably also be sure that our bees are working so that this actually starts mutating and growing. Remove the obstruction from the apiaries right here. This is still a cultivated queen though, and I have very high hopes of this becoming a noble queen very, very soon. At least that's the hope. The episode has been a little bit all over the place. I know, I know. We did a little bit of thumbcraft, some bee stuff and some Greg tech stuff. Originally, the plan was just to do the stainless steel, get this wand, and then end the episode, but half of my episode wasn't really usable, so yeah, didn't really happen that way. Still, I hope you enjoyed, and I'm going to see you next time.